Uh, this set of review problems concerns properties of the exponential function, and honestly, it's easiest to deal with them all at once, so hence putting them all in the same video. Uh, first, let's take a look at um, e to the x plus i y and simplify that. So, proof of number one. x and y are real numbers, so e to the x plus i y is equal to e to the x times e to the i y. That's a property of exponential functions that, um, just using the law of exponents, applies. Uh, this law of exponents applies uh, to exponential functions, to the function. So this is equal to e to the x times by definition, cos or not definition, by um, property we proved before, cosine of y plus i sine of y. And so that's the proof of number one. Uh, number two, let's simplify the magnitude of e to the z, or the magnitude of uh, e to the um, x plus i y. Okay, that's equal to the magnitude of e to the x. Well, it's that's equal to the magnitude of e to the x times cosine y plus i sine y. And we know that when we have a number that is written in a trigonometric form like this, that the magnitude of the, of the complex number is simply the thing that multiplies the cosine theta plus i sine theta. So the magnitude is simply going to be the absolute value of e to the x. And because e to the x must be positive, that is going to be simply equal to e to the x. And so that's uh, number two. Uh, number three, let's prove that e to the z can never be equal to zero. So number three. Um, well, so let's suppose e to the z was equal to zero. Then by the thing that we just did, so by um, number two, and I suppose I should have labeled this, this is number three we're doing now, and number two is what we just did. So by number two, the magnitude of e to the z would be equal to zero. And we just got done showing that the magnitude of e to the z is equal to e to the x, where x is a real number. Now, we don't know right now about complex numbers, but we know full well that we can't have a number uh, e to an exponent and get zero. E is a real number, x is a real number. e to any real number cannot be equal to zero. And therefore, e to the z cannot be equal to, uh, magnitude of e to the z cannot be equal to zero either. So that can't happen. So no matter what, e to the z cannot be equal to zero. Um, so the basic idea is that if e to the z is equal to zero, then the magnitude of e to the z is equal to zero. But the magnitude of e to the z is e to the x, where x is real, and we know full well that e to the x can never be equal to zero by the ordinary properties of e to the x. Uh, finally, number four. Let's prove that e to the z is periodic with a period 2 pi i. In other words, if we take e to the z plus 2 pi i, the claim is that this is going to be equal to e to the z. If I can show that e to the z plus 2 pi i is equal to e to the z, then e to the z would be periodic with period 2 pi i. Okay, well by definition this is equal to e to the x plus i y. Uh, plus 2 pi i. And combining the imaginary part, that would be equal to e to the x plus i times y plus 2 pi. 
Let me get rid of the end point because we're going to need a little bit of extra space. Uh, by definition, the, or uh, by the pro first property, this is equal to e to the x. So I shouldn't say by definition. By the first property, by number 1, this is equal to cosine e to the x times cosine y plus 2 pi plus i sine y plus 2 pi. Okay, now cosine and sine of real numbers are period, periodic with period 2 pi. And so I can I simply drop the extra 2 pi. So this is equal to cosine y plus i sine y. And therefore, this is equal to e to the z, which is where I wanted to end up in the first place. So that proves number 4. So um, these four um, properties of the exponential function are fairly closely related, and so I thought it would be easiest to simply do them all at once in the same video.